All right, uh, unit, or actually yeah, unit seven, I guess we could call it. Um, but this unit, the unit after unit three, is going to consist of um, stuff from chapter seven and stuff from chapter nine. So we, we don't really call it unit four. Um, I'll just say lesson seven one, lesson seven two, lesson seven three, and then nine three and nine four. So I uh, can't really call it a unit anymore. <laughs> They're all just kind of scattered. Just the topics we need to get in before the um, before uh, the end of semester. So um, this one is solving systems with two equations. So some of this might seem um, like review to you, and if it does, that is awesome. In fact, almost all of us will probably be today just review for you. Um, so learning target number one, I can solve systems with two equations by using substitution, elimination, and by graphing. And I can solve applications of real-world problems using systems with two equations. Um, so first off, number one, solve by using substitution. So probably something that it's uh, it's been a while since you've done it. Uh, I'm not sure you would normally pick substitution, but we just need to know how to do it just so it's there. Um, for substitution, we need to get one of the variables by itself. And I think that's right there. It's going to be the easiest variable to get by itself, that, that y. I'm going to make it a positive y eventually. And what I'm going to do, if we're being y to the right side, it'd be a positive. 2x is still by itself. And then bring the 10 to the left side. I'd eventually get y equals 10x minus 10. I'm sorry, 2x minus 10. And then you're going to plug that in up here. So 3x plus 2. And then instead of y, plug in 2x minus 10. It's place. And because I did this correctly, there's no y's left. It's just x's. And that's what we want. We want an equation with just one variable because I can solve for one variable. So 3x plus uh, 4x minus 20 equals 1, that's 7x, and then I could add 20 to the right side, so 7x equals 21, so x equals 3. And if you remember, you're not done, because you found x, and when we're doing a system of equations, we're trying to find an ordered pair, an x and a y that is a solution to both. So I know that when I plug in 3 to both of these, there is a y that's the same also that I can plug in, there's a y that's paired up with it, um, that will make both equations true. Um, so if I go back, in fact, I'm just going to use this guy right here because y is by itself and that's what I want. So y equals 2, I'm going to substitute 3 in for x. So y would equal negative 4. Um, yeah, so if you want to double check that, plug them in. Plug in 3 and negative 4 in for x, you get 10. Plug in 3 and negative 4 here and you get 1. So I, I know that that is the... Um, that's the solution. Now these were two linear equations and with with lines, you know, the, the three options here, they could meet once, they could meet never, or they could actually be the same line and be have infinitely many solutions on them. Um, so that's two linear equations. Now a nonlinear system. Okay, so systems where you, you could have one linear equation, but the other one's not, or two nonlinear equations. So this one says find the dimensions of a rectangular garden that has a perimeter of 100 feet in an area of 300 square feet. So the, the I'm talking about perimeter, and I'm just going to say x is length and y is uh, width. I'll just, so it would be 2x plus 2y equals 100. So 2 times the width plus 2 times the length equals the perimeter. And then the other equation, um, let's see, x times y, length times width equals 300. Okay, so there's one set of dimensions that makes both of these true. Um, so first off, I'm going to take this equation here. I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to bring the 2x over. It would be 2y equals 100 minus 2x. Divide everything by 2. Okay, so we got y equals 50 minus x. I'm going to plug that in for this y right here. So we have x times 50 minus x equals 300. The left side, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. It would be 50x minus x squared, but I'm gonna rearrange that. And now I've got a quadratic, and I, to get a quadratic, I want everything on one side set equal to zero. So I'm actually gonna bring everything to the right side. That way, I have a positive x squared. So I'd have zero equals x squared minus 50x equal, or plus 300. And that does not factor nicely. I think two, two numbers multiply, give you 300, add to give you negative 50. Um, so 
plug it in a quadratic formula, let's put QF here, plug it in the quadratic formula, and you get two answers for x. You get 6.97 or, sorry, x equals, not quadratic formula equals, uh, 43.03. So there's two numbers, or two values that the, the length could be. Now I need to find the width that goes with it. So, and it sure looks like, well, look at this. If I plug 6.97 in for x and divide, I get 43.03. Mm. That means if x is this, y is that. Now if I plug this in for x, well, that's the same number here, so that's just going to flip-flop, which just means it doesn't matter which one's your length, which one's your width. So technically there is one answer here. Um, these are the dimensions. It's just you could flip-flop them. It's all this the same. So there's two different ways of doing um, those dimensions. It could be longer one way or it could be wider another way. Um, solve this system. Okay, so just graphically think about this. This is a cubic, probably something like that, and this is a line. So what could be happening here, it could hit it once. Now this goes, you know, the end behavior is positive infinity to the right and negative infinity to the left. So if I draw a line anywhere, I'm going to hit it at least once. So there's at least one solution. I could hit it once, I could hit it twice, or I could hit it three times. Okay, that's pretty much my option. So um, we'll see how many x values we get here. So if they both equal y, let's set them equal to each other. Okay, so they both equal y. I'm going to bring this um, this over here, so I'm going to subtract 3x. So 0 equals x cubed minus 9x. Do some factoring. I could take an x out of both of those. x squared minus 9, difference of two squares. So x plus 3x minus 3. That means my x equals 0 or 3, I'm sorry, negative 3, or positive 3. And then to find the y that goes with it, I'm going to use this equation right here. So if I plug 0 in, if x equals 0, then y equals 0. Whoops. If x equals negative 3, y equals um, negative 9. If x equals 3, y equals 3. So these are the ordered pairs that go together. 0 comma 0, negative 3 comma negative 3, 3 comma 3. And you can verify this by graphing. So we just put in our calculators. There's my two equations. Graph it. Maybe you get a better picture than that. Whoops. Get a better picture than that. There we go. So there's our cubic. And then here's a line that goes through them. Where do they hit? Negative 3. Um, whoops. I know it's not multiplied by 3 here. When I, if I did write it here, negative 9, this should be 9. My goodness, it's a negative 9. I did this for a reason. Just kidding. Um, so I said I did this for a reason to show you should check yourself more than one way. Negative 3, negative 9, 0, 0, and 3, 9. Um, so make sure you multiply correctly. Yikes. Okay, so 0, 0, negative 3, negative 9, and positive 3, positive 9. Now, sometimes um, the functions are just kind of crazy like this. Now, the, the, neither one of these are lin linear. And if you think about, you know, what are the odds that a quadratic and a logarithm happen to meet at a nice, neat whole number x value and a nice, neat whole number y value? It's very unlikely. So um, this one, we're just going to use our calculator to graphically um, solve it. Okay, so I'm going to put this guy in the calculator, hit graph. Hopefully I can see everything that's going on here. There's a quadratic, so a logarithm, quadratic turns. There's nothing going on off the screen because I've seen all the turns. The quadratic has one turn. Logarithm has that kind of bend off to the right. So I don't need to zoom out and look anywhere. Right? Just my knowledge of the shapes of these functions, I can tell um, this is it. So I'm going to meet twice here. So if you remember, go second calc. These up here. So I did second calc. And I'm looking for an intersection. I'm looking for where two of them meet. Okay, so first curve, if I can't see, there it is. There's my cursor. So I want, I just want to select both curves at some points. So right now it's on the blue curve first. Great, hit enter. And it says, well, your second curve. Well, I want the red curve, so I'm going to hit enter. And then for a guess, whatever one you're closer to is the one it's going to tell you. So I'm going to try to find the left one first. And I get 0.711 comma negative point three four zero do it all over again to find the other one <clears throat> so 
first curve blue curve, second curve red curve. That order does not matter at all. So there's my, I want to find that one. So 3.828 and 1.342. Okay. So you can use this to always check yourself, but the next two sections are all about this process of solving. So don't just always go straight to graphing and get your answer and have not have any work to show because 7, 2, and 7, 3 are going to be a shock to you if you do that. Um, use an elimination. This might be the way you guys like more. Remember, elimination is I want to add or subtract straight down, you know, with both equations being in standard form. I want to add or subtract straight down to get rid of the x's or the y's. As this is written, it's not going to happen because neither one of them will get canceled out. So I'm going to do multipliers. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to multiply the <clears throat> first equation by 3 and the second one by 2, and that way... This will be 6, this will be negative 6, and the x's will wipe out. So it would be 6x plus 9y equals 15. Negative 6x plus 10y equals 42. Now if I add straight down, these go away. We have 19y equals 57, so y is 3. So it's pretty quick. We, we find our first variable a lot faster when we do elimination. Now plug it in. So pick one of those doesn't matter which one, I'll just pick this one. So 2x plus 3 times 3 equals 5. That's 9. So 2x is going to equal negative 4, so x equals negative 2. <clears throat> so negative 2 comma 3 is your solution. Um, just to see what it looks like, if you remember, there's times where there could be no solution or infinite many solutions. So these are both linear <clears throat> linear equations, you know, what does that look like? So let's use elimination here. So in this first one, I'm going to take the top equation times negative 2. Leave the bottom one alone. And add straight down. So I've got 0 plus 0 equals 8. I lost all my variables. And when you lose all your variables, that means it's either no solution or infinitely many. The difference is, look at the equation that results, and is it true or is it not true? So is it true that 0 equals 8? That is not true. So if it's not true, it's no solution. Not true means no solution. There, there's no pair that makes both of these true. And if you were to graph them, they're going to be parallel lines. They never intersect each other, so they don't share a point. This one here, again, I'm going to use elimination, so I'm going to triple the top one. So that'll be 12x minus 15y equals 6, negative 12x plus 15y equals negative 6. If I add straight down, I get 0 plus 0 equals 0. Again, I lost my variable, so something else is going on. Um, you know, it's not a single point, but the thing is, this is true. 0 does equal 0, so if it is true, it's infinitely many solutions. So I say the first letter, not true, no solution, is true, infinitely many solutions. That's, that's my weird way of remembering it. Um, the equilibrium point. So how are manufacturing? You didn't know that. I, uh, on the side, I have a manufacturing company. We make tennis shoes. Um, so it's determined, because you know, it's my company, so I determine this, that production and price of new tennis shoes should be geared towards equilibrium point. So that's where the supply and the demand are um, about equal. So I'm trying to find the right price to charge. Um, so if I, if I charge too much, the demand will go down and my supply goes up too fast because I'm not selling them and then you know vice versa if I sell them for too little the demand will be high because everybody wants the Hauer shoes um, then the supply won't have enough to sell and my supply goes down so I want to try to find that equilibrium point so so the find the price P um, that gives me that that kind of balance point and X is the um, millions is pairs of shoes and millions I, I sell a lot of shoes a lot of tennis shoes you never know I'd have time to teach, but um, so if I want to find the equilibrium point, since they're both have x values in them and they both equal p, well, this is just a substitution. So um, let's see. Oh, I got ahead of myself. One sixty minus five x equals thirty five plus twenty x. Okay, get the x's together. So I want to add five x both sides. So this is gone. I'm going to subtract thirty five to get that to the other side. So this is gone. So we got 25x equals 125. So 
for five. So five million pairs of shoes is what I want to sell. Now that doesn't tell me what price to charge though. That just says a certain price. If I charge a certain price, then the demand will be about five million shoes probably per month. I sell a lot um, per month. And then the demand or the supply, I can probably make about that many too. So there'd be, a, I can make as many as I want to sell. Now what price do I need to charge? So go back to either one of these. Doesn't matter which one. Um, just I'll just pick the first one because so the price equals 160 minus five times five. So 160 minus 25 is 135. So there you go. If you want to pair my shoes, you got to save up some money.